Hey man, this isn't the fidget show. That's scheduled for tomorrow. Now get out. Change the camera settings and everything. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, today's movie is Performance, which was filmed in 1968 and released in 1970, and it's starring Mick Jagger, Anita Pallenberg, and James Fox. The film was written and directed by Donald Camel and co-directed by Nicholas Roeg, who would then go on to make many more films featuring early roles of rock stars from the likes of Mick Jagger to David Bowie to Art Garfunkel and so on. Um, and he always uses this very rapid style editing technique in all his films, which, uh, you know, plays with the presentation of the narrative and sort of tries to convey messages to varying degrees of success. The British actor John Binden is also in here. Uh, he was in Barry Lyndon and one of my favorite movies ever, Quadrophenia. Um, as he does here, he usually plays gangsters, which apparently he was himself in real life. So with this very surreal editing style comes a plot that's somewhat scattered, I guess you could say, but it's pretty much, I guess I would call it, a crime thriller sort of movie. And with this sort of surreal editing style, we get a plot that's a bit scattered, but basically it's James Fox playing a gangster who participates in various mob activities and eventually himself gets set up and he gets away, but he has to hide out, so he happens upon this uh, apartment that Mick Jagger and Anita Pallenberg and some other young lady are renting out, and they're just kind of swinging, man, and hanging out, and, uh, you know, they don't really want him there for some reason, though, and, like, what are they trying to hide, you know? Besides the crime drama element, you could definitely link this movie to those sort of movies that were coming out in the mid-60s, late-60s, into the 70s that were part of this new wave of cinema and new wave of you know, making films. Of course, the editing technique that Rogue was using was very much a part of that. But also, I can kind of link this movie to maybe something like Blow Up. I would say James Fox's performance is pretty good. Anita Pallenberg appears like she just doesn't give a shit, really, and she seems pretty lively. Mick Jagger's performance is uh, pretty hammy, to be honest. He's really just going for it, too, though, which is cool. I don't think I would want to live with them either. And the selection of music is very varied. We get everything from rock and roll to blues to uh, electronic noodling before it was very good yet, especially towards the front end. It's just like, ooh, this is headache inducing. But the supporting cast can definitely be overdone in this movie. I'm talking like 450 degrees in an oven for an extra two hours. There's certainly themes present. Um, some are conveyed more subtly than others, but there's definitely a lot of you know, for example, like sex and violence being pitted together, or sex and sex. There's just a lot of sex and nudity in this movie, especially for its time, and that really contributed to the reason of why it was filmed in 68 and didn't come out until 70. You could read up on the story of how much had to be cut out for the theatrical release and all this and that, and it was just definitely considered way too sexually explicit for its time. Now the constant cutting around, in this movie anyway, I thought was sometimes effective, sometimes not, and could have been used better at some moments, and some moments it just kind of wasn't necessary. The editing style also makes it kind of cool because you never know what's going to happen in the next moment, and sometimes it'll just go into a completely crazy, you know, style of the way a scene is being shot before jumping back into the reality. I can feel maybe a connection to movies such as, uh, besides Blow Up, El Topo and Holy Mountain, and this was actually predating both, I suppose, if it was completed in 68. Also maybe something like uh, Lucifer Rising, as I reviewed, or uh, maybe the fact that it's for some reason just disturbing to see someone eat a plate of food right next to or inside of a bathtub like in Gullo. I feel as though at times the movie kind of loses track of what it's going for or what sort of movie it's trying to be, but at the same time, I don't know man, it's like it's a... It's got all the right ingredients for a great rock and roll movie. Just the overindulgence, the sex, and the drugs. Even the title, Performance, just feels so wonderfully 60s pretentious title. Though I'm not saying it doesn't have a meaning behind it, I'm sure it does, but... It's one of those fun things where you can kind of draw your own conclusion from what it means. And also, I just like watching movies of this type from this time period, getting to look at all the crazy, wacky interior design. Oh man, swinging London in the 60s, is there anything more just mod and 
swinging and swings. Ah, uh, it swings. And also the fact that this is a time period where a movie of this sort of status, they'll leave in mistakes, I hope. And this is certainly a movie that you have to watch a few times in order to understand everything and take it all in. And I would say, looking back on this movie decades later, we could probably see it with better clarity than... I don't know what I'm talking about. You would have to ask somebody who's that old, obviously. Oh, there's no one here that's that old at the moment. I'm sorry. And ultimately, it's a pretty cool movie if you don't mind the indirectness of the story and the sort of meandering pace that the movie will sometimes take. But you can definitely see the huge influence that the techniques utilized in this movie had on directors, every, every, everyone from this guy to that guy, from this year to that year. You could kind of just see it all. Even in terms of that scene where Mick Jagger is performing the song, that was probably an influence, I would assume, on how music videos were shot, right? And make sure you have the uncut version. It's about an hour, 44 minutes, something like that. And, uh, you know... Maybe I'll do some more Nicholas Rogue movies in the future. I could definitely count on that, yeah. Well, I guess that's about it, folks. Uh, be sure to drink an extra few glasses of water. We don't want you getting dehydrated. Well, might as well take your spot back. Stay septic.